and make the decisions to make a difference. Please give us the ability to be better servant leaders, Lord, and we ask that you would please give us the desire to love people regardless. And we say these things in your name. Amen. 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 Salute pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. When I was uh, teaching in school, the first test that I always gave to my class was to write the Pledge of Allegiance, irrespective of any misspelling. And I would grade it into the first mistake. My average class size was 23 to 25 people, and I averaged seven <coughs> So that's something that we need to work on. What grade? 10, 11, and 12. Oh, uh, yeah. Not first, second, third. High school. Oh, uh, first we have is a public hearing matter on the fire district and accession resolution approved petition for annexation. Property located at 4534. And then you got a pen and ink. Guys, we need uh, 4534 Rolling Ridge Lane in Gardendale. That's 4543. 4534. 30 cents. Um, <laughs> at this time, I would like to open a public hearing. Commissioner, I'm not. Perhaps I need to. Uh, what is it? Go ahead. Now, Commissioner, I'm not certain that this is appropriate in light of the fact that there's even that pen and ink for an appropriate uh, notice to be given out. Uh, I've got some concerns about it being a wrong address. So my recommendation is that, that you pull it and resend the notice. Okay. Representative of the fire district, are you good with that? Yes, sir. We just found out this morning from the property owner that the information that he sent me inadvertently listed the address incorrectly. Should be 45, 34 instead of 35. Yeah. So I would ask uh, <coughs> to have this thing postponed until we can advertise the trick. Okay, so Correct. what we'll do, we'll postpone that item. Thank you. How big a parcel is this? Property owner here, he can answer that many times. 125, 300. Sir? 125, 300. Okay. So mm -hmm. we just advertised uh, evidently the property across the street. Yes. Okay, well, Mr. Mr. Hold on, Mr. County Attorney. Are you recommending that mm -hmm. we delay this item and take an official vote to delay it? Uh, I would recommend that you move that you uh, either table it or withdraw it from the agenda, and we will then do an appropriate notice. Because I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with just we we just going to take it up another time. I think you need to take an action, even if that official action is the fact that we just delay it or 
table it or withdraw it? Well, well, there you go. Now, motion to table and I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Be tabled. I, I'm not so sure. We'll re notice it, it and re notice it and we'll represent it and reset it in public hearing. Yeah. That's all we're doing. Correct. Uh, I, I would like to uh, save the presentations to last, if, if that's okay. Uh, one, uh, community Affairs Committee Executive Director. Okay, good. I, I like that. Good. Uh, Commissioner, you have for you the uh, uh, minutes from our September the 12th uh, commission meeting. Are the, are the email additions, revisions, or corrections? Move the suspension of the reading and adopt the measure. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner, you got you have 50, 52 resolutions. Uh, are they in one item of you bitch? Yes. Sir. Our 52 resolutions uh, were properly vetted. Uh, on Mr. Tuesday. I moved to uh, uh, approve items 1 through 52. Um, with uh, seven aside, uh, number 50 for seven. Got a motion? Well, uh, <coughs> number 50 is 50 is provided. Uh, okay. <coughs> so, uh, Y'all should let it go with All right. Is that all right, man? You got a second? No, I'm not going to second it. I do. All right, well, I'll second. Oh. But hold on. Chair Leonard Chamber? Oh, hold on. That missed the attorney. Yes, ma'am. So this, this set aside uh, for item number 50. Um, I know that there's a motion on the floor, so this is a point of clarification for me. Excuse me, that uh, do we now take a vote on whether or not this motion passes or fails? At this point, your motion is whether to, whether to have to consider all items except that one separately. So that's correct. Okay, so I'd like to offer a subsequent motion. Is that is that permissible? Sure. Okay. Then my motion would be that we pass all items as presented. Okay. Second. All right. Take, take the vote. All right. Can we go on the first motion? Yeah. First motion has been a move and second. All in favor say aye. 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 No. No way no. Oh, I got exactly what they know. I said you get political today. I got you. There's a motion in a second. So the main motion, motion was to, right? Right. Was so just to set aside number fifty. Was to set aside number fifty. And she already knows. I'm saying. No, hold on. He's trying to get an understanding so that you can call the vote correctly, Mr. President. All right. There's a motion in a second. Then there was a motion for a substitute in a second. So don't you vote the substitute first, and then you revert back to your original motion? Correct. That's what the, okay. that's what Robert's Rules of Order said. That's the reason why I said no, and I meant. Okay. Oh, uh, we have a motion to second on the substitute motion. All in favor, say aye. aye. What, what are you saying, Mr. President? I am saying that, that I am offering the substitute right. motion. Oh, okay, so we're voting on the one where I'm saying on all one. items as presented. Yeah. Correct. That includes item number 50. Correct. Yeah. Correct? Correct. Okay, so yes. Yes. All right. I vote no on that one. All right. Yeah, so what that means, I can And hear. it still passes. Thank and you. And it still passes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next, we have one item of new business. Commissioners, we have, you have before you an amendment to the Siena Consultant contract. Um, if you'll recall, at one point we had scheduled the assessment term to be done, but we needed to do some additional recruiting. And part of that contract was to ensure that once a director was selected, that Siena would continue to be on board to help onboard that person and make them familiar with our processes. And also in anticipation of our critical needs list, there will be some additional assessments that may possibly be needed. So this contract extends the amount of time that they would be available to onboard our new director and also to potentially lock them under contract for additional assessment centers that may be necessary. Chair will uh, entertain a motion. Move for unanimous consent for immediate consideration. All right. We have a motion. We have a second. Mr. President, 
before we take a motion on that item. Has everyone received uh, the, the Sienna component of the agenda? Did you get it, Commissioner Tyson? Still with HR? Are you familiar with this at all? <laughs> I don't have anything other than what's on the agenda. Do we have a contract? Yes. Or, uh, it's an amendment to the existing one. I uh, as I understand it, it was loaded up in. the amendment do? How much does it cost? How long is it for? I mean, we can't just say, hey, we amended it. Well, as I understand, it was loaded up in the computer yesterday. Okay. But but the details of it, it is a contract not to exceed $89,000. Uh, that is extending, again, what they're already doing. It also locks them down for potential assessment centers that may be done in the future. How much paper? No, this is I'm sorry. Yes. This is the HR department, the new department. The new director, correct. Mm -hmm. Just ask a question. And this is... This is to the purpose of this amendment is to hire CN to help on board the new HR director. Correct. There was a period of time that we anticipated this would have been done, but because we had to go back because we wanted to do some more recruiting to get candidates on board, then the time frame needed to be extended because we thought this would have been done by now. But because we are because of the delay in getting the assessment centers going, we need to extend the contract so that that can be done. How, how far are we away from hiring something? Real close. And, and the part of your email said this was very important towards, you know. Correct. If you remember, the, the, two, the two items that were on the agenda were the hiring of an HR director. Let's okay. have a motion. Hold on. I have a question, please. This is just on the minimum consent. Just on the consent. Okay. So we can get it before us and then I can ask my question. Right. Thank you. Yes. We have a motion. Yes. We need a second. You want, you want a second? Second. I'm second. Um, Ms. Fieldberg. Commissioner Annis. Yes. Commissioner Knight. Aye. Commissioner Scales. Yes. Commissioner Tyson. Yes. Commissioner Stevens. Yes. Now would be appropriate for your question. So let me ask this question. When we talk about a time frame, is that like 30 days, 40 days? Before we go back to court date, what 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 are we looking at in terms of time frame? In terms of the amount of time it would take them to onboard our uh, director, mm -hmm. we would want them to have enough time until the director is comfortable with our processes and procedures. So I would not want to give you a specific date, having a, sp a specific dollar amount, but all of that would depend on. Uh, the person and how much it takes to get them on board enough for speed. So I certainly wouldn't want to say 30 days, 60 days, but we have a limited amount of time and based on the uh, dollar amount to get that done, but we don't anticipate. Uh, we plan on being judicious with the expenditure, but at the same time, we don't want, we want to make sure that the HR director that comes on board uh, has the resources that they need to ensure that they can do an effective job. So my question would be then, uh, John Henry. Uh, yes, ma'am. This is a budgeted item, obviously, right? Yes. All right. So, do we have any other additional dollars if we exceed this amount that's proper for us? Well, what we've done in HR's budget, we did reduce HR's budget from last year to this year, mm -hmm. but we did leave a little bit of extra money not knowing um, exactly what would happen in reference to HR and what would be required from the court. So we feel that there is enough money to cover these added expenditures. If it exceeds this amount? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So and of course, if it exceeds this amount, we would, come, we would have to come back to the commission anyway. Oh, I know. I just right. wanted to know mm -hmm. if we had more money in the pot to come back to ask for. So let me ask you this, Mr. Patel. This mm -hmm. question is directed to you. Will we have the opportunity as a commission to meet this director before you finalize anything? No. I'll answer that. Okay. Hold, hold on, Mr. President. I mm -hmm. want Mr. Patel no, to answer that on the record. No, ma'am. Okay. Because... I'm unhappy with how, how that last issue was resolved, and I'm not going to say it here. We never received an executive session as it relates to why that person was dismissed. So that's why I'm asking you, I'm putting it back on you. 
whoever this HR director is, at some point, I want them to understand while they may take directives from you, they work for this commission too. So that's the reason why I'm asking up front so it's on the record. I don't need Mr. President to speak for me, I speak for myself. Okay? And so I'm letting you know that up front and on the record because we still have not had that discussion. And so I just want to make sure we're not uh, putting curtains on the windows but have no intention to, to change the kitchen. That's it. Yes, ma'am. Is it any way that um, when an issue comes, if we can get a report on that um, of the last uh, person that was in the HR uh, seat, and if it come up again, that will stop all of this tension. All I feel like the commission want to be is informed, and that's what you're not doing. When you don't inform the commission, things like this happen. And we know that we can't give any directors to a, the uh, HR or person, but we do want to be informed if you're going to fire a person uh, and we look up, they're gone, and we don't know anything and what happened, then you hear the rumors. I don't think that's directly because you do, Mr. Patel, know that you answer to all commissions, not no one. Yes. You know, and I think we just want to be informed. And that's got to stop all of this. Okay, because I, I just, I just, I don't like, I don't, I like, I don't like when you hide, it, it just seems like you're hiding things. That's what makes people protest because they feel like you're trying to hide something and they make, they make them act out and I, I don't want them. Just inform us and just let us know. It ain't nothing really, I don't really think it's nothing we can do about it. But when you don't inform us, we're going to end up in, in, a, in a big mess and end up in court somewhere. Yes. And Mr. President, let me add to that too. The reason why I'm making this request and I'm making it on the public record because Commissioner Tyson, we actually can do something about it according to the County Manager Act uh, that it was amended in 2011. We actually can bring back any person that is released or dismissed from here back within 30 days if we so decide that we would like for them to stay. For example, if you choose to get rid of John Henry or anyone else that's sitting here at this table. Well, I mean, it's just a Reading to me is very fundamental, and I don't ever think that the act, even as amended, was intended for the county manager to have more power than the county commission. But it still goes so, back to four votes, and I read the well, same thing, and you still sure. need four votes. I get it to go back. I'm not debating you. I'm just making right. sure that the county manager understands that we we do have a say, and if someone is released, how they can remain released or brought back. So that's why I'm saying this to you, Ms. Patelis. I don't want that to happen again. I'm not directing any other staff. I'm putting that to you. Okay. Mr. Mr. President, I move for approval of the professional, the extension of the professional service contract with CMA. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? <clears throat> I'll second. Oh. Ms. Stephen Burke, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Nod? Aye. Commissioner Scales? Yes. Commissioner Thompson? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Here's, and I just want to address this one final point because when we got the email yesterday about this extension, we have no, nothing to look at. We got, until we asked, we had no amounts or, or what it does. And, and basically, I, I guess I stopped reading is that uh, this is a contract to extend the onboarding time with our new HR director when they get appointed. Commissioner, my, my apologies for that. I, I thought that when the document was loaded up in the minute track that that was that everybody had access to it. No. So we were operating late yesterday evening. So I, it was I, I, yeah, I take responsibility for that because I thought that once it was loaded up into the system, that everybody had access to it. And said, I'll make sure that we get you copies to the, for that ASAP. Okay, and, and I was just wondering, like, okay, we're getting a new HR director. We got a county manager. We got two deputy county managers. We got a monitor. We got a special mm -hmm. master, and we like, and we got to hire a, a consulting service to tell this person what they need. The county, to do. the the but monitor. I understand the other part now about the assessments in the park. So, but that's that's my.
Okay. Um, last on the agenda is we have the presentations from District 2. And while they're getting ready to present that, I have a diverse supplier report that I've presented to all commissioners and uh, county manager staff. I have uh, three more here if anyone would like to come up after the meeting. And right now, I, I'm going to have to leave, so I'm going to turn the uh, meeting over to the trust program. You're not going to find this? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first of all, before making the presentation, uh, I would like to thank the Jefferson County uh, Commissioner for their support in previous years for your uh, support for the Community Affairs Committee uh, with the uh, Martin Luther King uh, breakfast that we have every year that will be coming up soon. And also thank you in advance for your support uh, for the breakfast that will be coming up soon. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Councilor uh, Sheila Tyson for uh, getting us on the agenda. And uh, But we're here today for a very serious cause, for a very serious reason. I'm Alice Westry, uh, the co-chair for the Community Affairs Committee. And I'm standing here with um, uh, Commissioner Sheila Tyson, which is also a member of the Community Affairs Committee, Erin Carlton, our executive director and coordinator, and all of the people standing behind me are community leaders and advocates that have also dedicated their life's work, dedicated their advocacy, dedicated their stance and their existence on this universe in making sure that we expose, educate, and advocate against racism. And so here today, we're here to uh, talk to you about CAC, the Community Affairs Committee, what we stand for and what we will not stand for. And what we will not stand for is the racism that's happening in our city, our county, and also in our United States of America. CAC has been around for over 50 years now, and we have been working since April 1969 concerning educating the community about racism. And so therefore, racism's ugly head has not died, it has not totally decreased, it has only been covered over, and it is still smothering, and now it has risen its head now to a limit to where it cannot be tolerated by the citizens. And so therefore, we are here today to talk about that root cause and to promote the decrease in the awareness of and to have the commissioner and our citizens in the county and in the state and preferably the United States to sign this pledge. And we would like to read this pledge, which is the pledge, Birmingham Pledge. And after reading that, we would like to request that you sign it, but not only sign it, but take to heart what the words mean in this Birmingham Pledge. And so I would like to just let you know just a little bit about what we do before reading the pledge. We're working to create a better community for all citizens throughout the Birmingham metro area, Jefferson County, the state of Alabama, strengthening race relations, advocating and educating and supporting and improving transit and seeking solutions for homelessness. Because as we know, racism is the root cause of all the depravities which is inequality in transportation, inequality in education, and also poverty and the increasing homelessness right before our eyes. And so now we would like to receive the Birmingham Pledge. And I, this. <laughs> I believe that every person has worth as an individual I believe that every person is entitled to dignity and respect regardless of race or color. I believe that every thought and every act of racial prejudice is harmful. If it is my thought or act, then it is harmful to me as well as to others. Therefore, from this day forward, I will strive daily to eliminate racial prejudice from my thoughts and actions. I will discourage racial prejudice by others at every opportunity. I will treat all people with dignity and respect. 
and I will strive daily to honor this pledge, knowing that the world would be a better place because of my efforts. Once again, I'd just like to thank uh, the commission. I'd like to see if Commissioner Tyson would like to say a word, and then Aaron. Well, when I signed that, Tyson hadn't signed that document. Five, three, yes, you had. She signed it. She signed it. She signed it. Uh, again, we would like to just thank this county commissioner for the award that you've given to the MLK Unity Breakfast, especially Commissioner LaScales and Tyson. I've been working with us over many years to make sure that this breakfast is affordable for all people. So with the contribution that we're receiving from you all, that's what makes it affordable. Again, thanks for every effort, and we will see y'all at the breakfast, January the 20th, at the Civic Center. You might, you might want to, did you hear extra call for people? You know, it take three votes, right? Right. Yes. And hopefully you get five. Yes. So I think you missed one. And Joe Knight. Can we say that in the microphone? Joe Knight. <laughs> Again, thanks. Mr. Tyson, you made. I want to ask: Was the department's head signed the uh, pledge, and the employees that want to sign the pledge? It's the same pledge she just read. Uh, <clears throat> it's a basic pledge because it's an organization. The Birmingham uh, pledge is a organization. It's a five hundred one c three. is located on the south side, and the pledge, like they said, been around for fifty years. It's nothing new. It's probably that uh, if you haven't seen it and haven't read it because it's the environment you've been in that put us in front of things like this. And right now is the right time for this to, uh, to come up with the state being in, in the, I guess, the atmosphere that it's in. And we're just trying to come together and love one another as just human beings on this earth. And basically that's what the pledge says. It has nothing to do with a uh, uh, Democrat or Republican. It's just if you're a breathing, living person, mm -hmm. that you want to be treated fairly and equally like you would anyone else. Amen. And thank, thank you for the ones that signed the pledge and the ones that just choose not to sign the pledge. I hope I, you can get in your heart and uh, uh, really read it and realize that it's nothing harmful and that you will have an opportunity to sign it also. Amen. Does anyone else have any comments for Mr. Tyson? <coughs> and then CAC? I didn't hear it. She's been here the longest. <laughs> <laughs> she also doesn't know. I'm, I'm, I'm probably the most violent one, too. Because <laughs> I go around with my hand like that. Um, good morning to you. And again, we want to thank you for all that you do every day to support and assist us as citizens of this state, this city, and the county. So again, thank you very much, and I'm Mary Jones. <laughs> Are there any commissioners that have anything you'd like to address the organization? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Commissioner Ammons. I, I appreciate I appreciate Commissioner Tyson bringing this to you. I think it's very timely, um, and I'm appreciative, and I think that. Um, those standards are something that we should all live by on a daily basis. It doesn't. Um, uh, it doesn't take. It shouldn't take an organization like you bring it around. It's something that we should strive to be as as good moral people and good Christians. Amen. Uh, that's what we're required to to, to, to treat each other uh, kindly and. and, uh, and Thank you. Thank you. We have the youngest person. <laughs> I was told since I'm the youngest person, I need to say something. I just want to start by thanking the commission, each and every one of you, um, for the work that you do. And just to give you a little bit of history on CAC, that it supports more than just race relations. It supports transportation, education, and homelessness as well. And in its work of being devoted over the last 50 years, it's taken a pledge to continue to do that work and now to involve community engagement as well as economic development. So you'll see more presentations from this good group of people as to what we can do to transform this city and this county. Thank you again. NAACP. 
Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dorothy Crosby. I am the president of the NAACP in Metro Birmingham. I am a part of this group, proud to be a part of it, and you know that the NAACP <coughs> we're celebrating our hundred and tenth year this year. And we are, you know, this is about we're, we're under the same umbrella for grassroots race relations. So we want to all just make sure that we do get along. And I thank you for signing this pledge. It means a lot to uh, all of these groups. This pledge will be, with these signatures, will be placed in a capsule out. But when we get ready to install the for the soldier money in Kelly Ingram Park. So a hundred years from now, when I, <laughs> I guess when they dig it up and replace it with a, with a, a flying saucer or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, 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 Walter will still be here. Right. <laughs> you said Walter going to still be here. So this paper will be dry and, and hopefully, you know, they will be able to read this just for, uh, really for our future. And Commissioner Knight. Hopefully, that won't be an issue. <laughs> that, that, that piece of paper up instead of it, they will be looking at it as we, the people. Absolutely. Right. Amen. Amen. So I was going to say um, uh, in closing that I think not only was it wonderful for you all to be here today at the ask and request of Commissioner Tyson, but the fact you talked about the Unity Breakfast, there's been so much discussion. Uh, as it relates to items in the budget, including port projects like the Unity Breakfast. I'm glad you touched on that because a lot of folk maybe here don't recognize that the Unity Breakfast was conceived with the idea that we would have race relations as a part of Operation New Birmingham. It expanded, obviously, and so when that came about that, hey, this might be uh, a black thing, or this may be a Republican or Democratic type of uh, item, is not. That's the reason why I'm glad you all asked for us all to repeat this pledge, because the Unity Breakfast, if you have not had the unique opportunity to go, if there are black people there, there are white people there, and if God created you, we want everyone to be there, because this is the only way that you're going to solve what's happening in our country. The last thing that I will say is this. I'm always reminded in 2011 when Osama bin Laden killed several hundred Americans on American soil. He did not care, neither did those who supported his cause, as to whether or not you were black or white. It was about killing Americans on American soil, and it made a statement, so much so that it changed the way we do business. And the bottom line is, until we get out of it benefiting black folks or white folks or any folk and just see the issue for what it is, then government is going to start working for the people and not the people just working to pay taxes to its government. So, uh, Commissioner Tyson, if you want to close it out, you have anything other that you want to add? I think it was a wonderful presentation. Just thank you so much for signing. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm a representative of myself as the foot soldiers, mm -hmm. and, it, and it breaks my heart that we're so distanced and so far apart. My mom <clears throat> taught us about foot soldiering back there. Do you know I lost a sister in there? She left home one Monday morning, and we didn't hear from her. Well, I was too young in a sense. But my mom didn't hear from her for three days later, face up in a ditch, because she told my mom, I'm going to know that you're going. So the children, we got to respect these children to see us. Do you all think that the children don't see us being corrupt? And I'm talking about all of us in every race, because we're green cat. They see us, but you want to call them thugs and criminals and this and that other. They see us. I need to say that. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> That's it? There you go. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tyson. Uh, Mr. Lawson. County Attorney, do you have anything to report? I do not. Yes. All right, yes. County Manager, Mr. Tony Patel, do you have any report? No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> On that note, I will I will say this. Um, 
Mr. County Manager, please keep us informed and I'd like to see you start doing some reports now, okay? Uh, so that the public knows that the County Manager has a talking voice. All right, any commissioners would like to make a report at this time? I'm sure Commissioner Tyson, because she has that, that BBB. Uh, yes, um, we're having a breast cancer. She's going to tell you. We have a breast cancer walk um, Saturday at Legion, at the historical Legion Field in um, Greymouth Avenue. It starts at 7 o'clock. It's registration. We are asking for you to come out to the Brenda Brown Bosom Buddies. It was uh, named after Brenda Hong. That's, she's a, a two-time breast cancer survivor, and it is called Brenda Brown Bosom Buddies because of the... I would say the um, the research shows that women of color has the strongest breast cancer out of all breast cancers, and it's a triple negative, and it's not talked about enough. So that's why we targeted our end on women of color because we can actually talk about it, and actually more research will actually uh, be done about that. In the, in the organization, no one gets paid. No one gets paid. No one. Every last dime of that money go into uh, transportation, uh, support system, because low-income people do not have support because everyone in the family works. It goes into free mammogram for people uh, because you know we don't have Medicaid expansion. It goes for people who don't have uh, any type of insurance. It goes for uh, breast cancer awareness, even in high schools. Since the uh, walk, we have uh, found at least 12 young ladies within high school age uh, has been diagnosed with breast cancer. And what if we hadn't went into the schools? Will they still be living now? We don't know. Because they have not, they, they, at that age, you're not even taking a uh, mammogram. So it brings awareness like that in our communities, and we are definitely in the hard hit in the hard rich areas. And I would like for you to come out and support a worthy cause where no one is receiving a salary from. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioner Tyson? Oh, yes. Commissioner Ann? Commissioner Knight? I'm gonna say everybody have a good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> And, you as well. <laughs> and, and enjoy this fall weather. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, so if we don't have anything else to come before us, uh, I did want to make sure that we had confirmed uh, the, the consent decree hearing date. I know that that was to be worked out. Have we finalized a date? And if so, if we can... My office sent the information a couple of days ago. Yeah. I don't have the date right in front of me, but I'll make sure that, that is uh, okay, so recirculated uh, close to the time. But uh, I know that it was sent. Okay, very good. Oh, here it is, 31st. Okay, so it's October 31? I'll confirm 10, that and get it to you. Okay, so okay, so if you could just make sure you follow yeah, with us, uh, Mr. Yeah. County Probably Attorney. Good day to wear your How are you? Yes. Uh, <laughs> all right, and and uh, I, I will say this. Um, I don't want to say much more, but I did tell what Commissioner Tyson uh, talked about as it relates to Brenda's Brown bosom buddies. Uh, we are, as a commission, supporting Brenda's Brown bosom buddies, which is breast cancer awareness for women and men, because men have breast cancer too. I have a possibility. And then we have Susan G. Coleman that is coming up October 12th. Am I correct, Helen? Yes. All right. And so we want to make sure that if there are any employees who are interested, uh, I think Commissioner Tyson and myself would love to see you uh, on Saturday. It's a great event. It's well attended. Uh, and then if you'd like to have a team, I think that the uh, commission may be a little late for Brenda's Brown Building Day buddies for this year, but hopefully uh, that we'll have us a team in the Susan G. Coleman here to the Wise Health uh, so we can start placing uh, commission Jefferson County teams in both of these uh, races uh, so that the community knows that we are about innovation. That's what the Bicentennial celebration is all about. And I believe, uh, just as my pastor said on Sunday, and I will close out on this, he said, the epitome of complacency 
as for one to know where they are but refuse to change. What happens as a result of complacency is that you become irrelevant. And I believe that this commission is going to be relevant and we're going to do the things that we need to do in the best interest of all involved. So, yes, they can, they can bring a team out there and sign. Okay, so it's not too late. Mm -hmm. You got a telephone number they, besides her cell phone? No. Uh, they can come out to the site with a team okay. and register they, t their team that morning at 7 o'clock. So anyone interested in and, uh, having a team and, and you, you brothers on the day as you can come to. I just said about men. We celebrate men out there. So uh, on this Saturday, Legion Field Stadium, the walk begins at 7 o'clock. You can bring a team. And we would love to have people of all races that we just repeated to participate, okay? So that's this Saturday, Legion Field, 7 o'clock, Susan G. Coleman. We'll have more details about that forthcoming uh, from Helen. And if we have no other business, then we are uh, adjourned and we can, I'm used to us having a motion to adjourn. So go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. Um, recovering from a torn meniscus in my knee. I'm having trouble walking, but LaShonda is going to be running in my place. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. You can walk up to the microphone. Your mouth is still working. All right, so we have no other items before this meeting is adjourned. Re I'm sorry? Recess. 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 Well, you know, but Mr. President been adjourning. I'm, I'm clear with he, He's been adjourning, so I don't want no items to come back up that happened today. So that's why we're going to adjourn this meeting. Just like he adjourned the budget. All right. <laughs>